Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Beth Keener, and I'm joined by Josh Weiss, President of Hexagon's Manufacturing Intelligence Division, and Vic Vashnavi, CEO of ETQ, part of Hexagon. And today we're reflecting on the first year of the ETQ and Hexagon partnership and what it means for a data-driven and sustainable manufacturing future. Well, thank you both for speaking with us today. This sounds like a lot to unpack. Are you ready? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Is this a question I should ask the two men that have all the answers? <laughs> well, let's dig in. First, let's introduce ourselves and tell us a little bit about um, your roles at Hexagon. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll start. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm the president of Hexagon's Manufacturing Intelligence Division, almost at the year anniversary, but I've been with Hexagon for the past eight plus years. Started off in the mining division and then as COO of Geosystems. And then as I mentioned, about a year ago, I was asked to take over this when Paulo took over the overall role for Hexagon. Very fancy, Josh. And Vic, how about you? So I'm relatively new, um, six months into Hexagon. I joined ETQ early this year. And prior to that, you could sum up my career in two parts. Uh, 15 years of building cloud infrastructure and management software for that. And then the next 15 building enterprise business applications that run on that cloud. And hence, hence ETQ now. Well, it's been a little over a year since Hexagon has acquired ETQ. So first we'll start with Josh. What did Hexagon see in ETQ that made you think, ah, hey, this is a beneficial relationship? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of reasons, obviously, but number one was just the brand and reputation that ETQ has as the leader in quality management or QMS solutions. Just great reputation across the board, filled by great people and great customers. And so that was a perfect fit. But ultimately with that was the focus on quality. And so in Hexagon and Manufacturing Intelligence, we're really the experts in quality data capture. Mm -hmm. We call metrology or inspection, et cetera. And ETQ really complemented us by introducing the workflows and the quality data that comes with that as well. So it's entirely complementary. Plus I'd also say a leading technology stack, a really good architecture and other things for us to scale as part of the broader Hexagon uh, portfolio. Vic, you're building all that too. All of it's your is your brainchild, right? All these these listings that he has. I, I think from a narrative perspective, Josh is spot on. Um, <laughs> I would simply say, you know, HMI and metrology has the data. ETQ converts data into information, and then information into intelligence mm. and actionable intelligence, if I could use that term. Um, the idea essentially is to take all these disparate sets of data that we have and allow organizations to essentially make meaningful and impactful business decisions right. using that data. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that word, impactful. Now, tell me more about the overarching strategy. What do you hope to accomplish together? Um, Josh, tackle this one, and Vic, if you have any thoughts you want to throw on, please do. Yeah, I mean, it ultimately comes back to our customers and the problems and the challenges that we're trying to solve for them. One of the biggest challenges with quality and quality data is how disparate and siloed it is, as Vic mentioned a couple examples of that. And so really with ETQ coming on board, we have all the pieces of the puzzle, what we call the digital thread, from parts inspections, through workflows, through underlying architecture of technology to connect all these different disparate data silos, which is what our customers are, are demanding at the end of the day and what we're trying to solve. Mm. And I think to, to needle that through, what you need is a digital platform on which on one side, you can assimilate all these disparate data sets, normalize them, and then have some kind of analytics, hopefully driven by things like modern technologies like AI and machine learning, that allows the different stakeholders to make these impactful business decisions. The idea is, you know, you have islands of automation across the manufacturing line, and you want to build bridges across all of them. And that's really what ETQ is trying to do in, in terms of, as part of MI. Mm -hmm. Now, Vic, this next question is for you. What does the ETQ Reliance platform look like long term and um, how will we or it evolve to get there? So I think long term, as Josh was saying, the idea is to be the assimilator, the central hub of bringing all kinds of quality data affiliated with manufacturing, all different types. It could be supply chain, could be conformance, it could be SPC, could be metrology, and all the way even to connected worker. So people who actually are on the shop floor delivering and you know, working on the equipment, they are also telemetry for us in some ways, not just the equipment, but also the human beings. And then the other aspect of it is to empower those folks to make just-in-time decisions versus just-in-case decisions, mm -hmm. which makes manufacturing that much more optimal, lowers the cost, lowers the risk, 
and actually streamlines the manufacturing process and prepares, quite frankly, businesses for more of a digitized manufacturing as opposed to the traditional legacy, you know, assembly line. Now, you are answering this in so many words, but please elaborate. Why, why is data so important to your customers? So I think, think of it this way. If you want to make an informed business decision, um, it comes from having, A, the right type of data, B, analyzing that data, and then C, consolidating it across different dimensions to have a holistic view of the business decision or the problems that you're trying to solve. If your data is not there or you don't have all the types of data sets mm -hmm. conforming together and assimilated, you're kind of making kind of a half-baked decision mm -hmm. and half-baked decision by definition means risk and risk by extension means cost, brand reputation damage, and other negative business connotations. Yeah. I heard a good expression that data is the new oil, but just like oil, if it's unrefined, you can't really consume it as well. And so really, a lot of our customers are data rich, but really information poor. True. And so the contextualization of the data to make it relevant, to make it actionable, to connect it, et cetera, from the shop floor to what we call the top floor is also connecting people, departments, organizations, et cetera. And so all that is the culmination of where we're going and how this is evolving. Yeah, that, that's true, that's true. And, and quite frankly, make it more self-service, you know, rather than supervised yep. way of doing it, make it more self-service. So a connected worker on the shop floor has access to the same type of information to make decisions, mm. be trained on what they're expected to do. And then on the top floor, the process owners, the executives, everybody has the same view of, of the manufacturing process at the end of the day. Uh, we just had a, uh, or have had an incredible conversation about democratiz democratization of information, and that's exactly what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Having that access to information here and here allows everybody to work more efficiently mm -hmm. and uh, it to be more streamlined. It, it, it's also, if you think about those businesses that are gonna be the leaders in the future, mm -hmm. um, at least in talking to our customers, one of the things we have learned is the term which we hear from them a lot, is decision velocity, meaning the ability to take the right decision in the right direction mm. uh, and in right time, obviously. Um, and fundamentally, when you think about decision velocity, it rests on three pillars, which is what ETQ is built on. And you, know, you asked earlier, where are we headed uh, in concert with the HMI portfolio and broader hexagon, is along the whole promotion of decision velocity. And there's really three elements to it. There's automation, I think Josh mentioned different elements of it, workflow, decisions, et cetera. Analytics, heavily converting data into information, information into intelligence. And then I would say things like AI and machine learning, which make it more self-service, mm -hmm. learning, self-learning. So we don't have to kind of figure out and say, what are the best practices versus the best you can practice? Think mm. of it that way. So Josh, what type of data is critical in making informed decisions um, when it comes to manufacturing? Oh man, that's that's the one challenge too, is because quality touches every single step of the value chain or the manufacturing process. And so quality data in itself is so commingled with things like supply chain management, MES or manufacturing enterprise systems, et cetera. So I don't think there's a single, I would say point that is the most important data. It's really the aggregation of all of it that's mm -hmm. connected that is really truly intelligent and, and, and all of that that we discussed earlier as well. But it's just so ingrained in the manufacturing process that quality literally touches every single step of, uh, of the customer's value chain, ultimately to the end consumers of those products and parts that they're producing as well. Um, so yeah, it's really about the connectivity, that digital thread as we call it, across the entire value chain. Now, you were touching on this earlier about the, the bottom floor having the same information as the top floor. How is automation and data-driven quality beneficial to both or all of them and the frontline workers specifically? Yeah, so I, I think if, you, if we start from the shop floor or the, or the floor, the workshop floor, the workers or the connected workers as we like to call them, those are folks who essentially need training, that's first. Second, post-implementation of training to enforce that training to make sure all the right checks and balances are being done. And then third, in case something goes wrong, how do you empower them to do remediation as quickly as possible, as opposed to them sitting there and saying, okay, the production line is now halted because we don't know what we have to do. So that's one type of data set, one type of a role, 
the type of information they would need access to is very different than versus uh, perhaps a quality process owner who's doing it for compliance. Things like corrective actions or policies, et cetera, that they want to enforce, that's a different type of a data set. They'll take a more holistic view and say, hey, maybe my supplier X versus Y versus Z, I should swap out them because the parts they're shipping me are turning out to be the root cause of defects I'm seeing. That's a very different role, very different data sets. But as Josh was saying, these are all disparate data sets, but you need to kind of connect them together. And what's a good simple example of it? If there is a supplier problem, somebody in the top floor is gonna figure out that supplier A versus B is preferred, but they'll also be able to know that supplier A's components are defective and they cause problem in you know, production line number one, where workers A through B are kind of impacted and empower them to say, listen, you should probably source now components from the supplier B because that's a better quality. So you're connecting the top floor and the shop floor, mm -hmm. both to promote the quality, but also doing it just in time as opposed to, well, let's pause and then try to figure it out. So it's information at your fingertips mm -hmm. just when you need it and not, not hunt for it when, quite frankly, there's a problem that you're encountering. Now let's talk sustainability and what that looks like and means in the manufacturing realm. But I'm also going to go into our next little bit of question because I feel like they uh, both intertwine. How can this partnership help in a world with disrupted or evolving supply chains? So we're talking um, both of those elements. Josh, you want to start? Uh, yeah, I mean, sustainability is here to stay and it's front and center of every one of our customers across all the different industries. What I've really learned to appreciate when we talk sustainability with our customers, they're not just talking about lowering their manufacturing footprint. They're mm -hmm. talking about the entire end uh, consumption model of their products, how they can make that more of the circular economy, flowing it back through more efficient designs, et cetera, et cetera, as well. And so they are now looking, I think, and evolving towards that whole, um, the whole value chain and looking at it from that point of view as well, which is the right answer or the right problem that they're trying to solve. The supply chain component to it too, especially pre and post pandemic has just been completely turned on its head as well. There's been shortages, availability issues, which all also has an impact back to quality and the need for more efficient quality steps as you're changing suppliers, as you're looking towards secondary sources, et cetera, as this is all being redesigned and defined as well. And so I think both of those are now being looked at with a new lens that you need to look at your supply chain with sustainability hand in hand as well. Mm -hmm. What's the most efficient and the most effective way with the quality view on it as well? How does it fit into the circular economy? And ultimately, how does it feed back into design? But it's, it's definitely here to stay and it's a problem and a challenge that is being addressed by technology as well, specifically on how they're gonna do it in a more efficient way. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, um, you know, Josh touched on two things which are very important. One is the supplier side of the quality, and the other is how does it link to sustainability? I'll give you a specific example. Uh, we have a customer that actually used our analytics portion to source the right supplier. There are multiple suppliers. They wanted to figure out which supplier is actually giving them the highest quality of products or components, causing the minimum defects on downstream. However, they also found out, interestingly enough, that amongst the different suppliers, the components that they offered or supplied had different impact on the energy consumption of the equipment itself. So supplier A, B, and C, and they were able to figure out that, hey, we wanna find out who is the supplier that gives us the best quality component, but also has the minimal impact on consumption. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, this one particular customer, they spent almost $800 million a year on electrical like utility charges. Uh, simply by switching and saying, look, we have to kind of figure out if we change the suppliers, their supply chain quality improvement range from almost 30 to 35% improvement. So 30 to 35% of 800 million, that's a huge ROI. Yeah, right. That's a no brainer ROI, right? So that's how quality ties to supplier, sustainability, but more importantly, having an actual business impact that you can measure and it's tangible. Mm -hmm. All right, Josh, so finally, what excites uh, you and Vic about the future of manufacturing and the ETQ Hexagon partnership and shared vision. Yeah, I'll, I'll start Vic and then you Please. jump in, but I don't think we can summarize it in a short <laughs> statement just because there's so much that we're excited about. Um, but one thing that I've really 
embraced and taken note of when I talk to customers across all over the world, across all different industries, is their shared optimistic outlook for the future. And that's across humanity, across their own businesses, et cetera, et cetera. And they really do see technology as an enabler for those changes with the concepts like we discussed for the need for data, quality, supply chain, et cetera. And so I think us as Hexagon and in manufacturing intelligence, we're right there and positioned perfectly to help enable our customers and their shared optimistic outlook for the future. Wonderful, Vic, how about ETQ? I would second that, and I think from ETQ customers that I've talked to, they shared the same vision, which is make manufacturing processes smarter, make them more digital. Uh, it's almost, you could almost talk to almost all of the ETQ customers, they would say, we're investing in ETQ as part of a digital transformation process that they're doing. Um, the idea is to not look at manufacturing as yet another business process that they have to do the way they, they have been doing it, but essentially leverage quality as the new data oil, as, as Josh mentioned, and refine it in a way that allows them to make better and informed decisions for the future. So you can optimize it, and then obviously the, the benefit of that is not just a manufacturing process that's highly optimized, but also you're doing good things in terms of sustainability, reduce your energy consumptions, footprint, and all the other things that we all want to see in the future. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. I mean, this conversation could probably go on a while, so you both have brought a lot of insight into manufacturing, sustainability, and your um, shared vision with ETQ and Hexagon. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having us. All right, our viewers out there, you can learn more about what we've been discussing today and other Hexagon fun content at hexagon.com. And you'll be learning about the latest news and stories across the entire world of Hexagon. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.